Hi, my name is Isaac Lopez. And I'm Kim Clark. And today we are going to be presenting two different paintings for you guys. Okay, so the first painting we're going to go over is by Max Ernest, and it's entitled Showing a Young Girl and the Head of His Father. This painting was done during the 1926-1927 to era. It was done on oil on canvas and is now presented in the National Gallery of Scotland. <coughs> um, Max Ernest was a German-French painter, and he was born near the Cologne of Germany. After studying philosophy at the university, he turned his attention to art and became the leader of the Cologne Dada group in 1919. He moved to Paris in 1922 to work with the Surrealist, adapting the technique of collage and photo montage for use by the group. He worked in a range of media throughout his artistic career, producing work that was irregular, experimental, and highly imaginative. In accordance with the National Gallery of Scotland, Ernst attempted to freely paint from his inner psyche in an attempt to reach a pre-verbal state of being. Doing so unleashed his primal emotions and revealed his personal traumas, which then became the subject of his collages and paintings. This desire to paint from the subconscious, also known as automatic painting, was central to his surrealist work and would later influence the abstract expressionists. This large work was painted while Ernest was working with the Surrealist group in Paris, and he seems to highlight the Oedipal complex with his father. The Surrealists were fascinated with psychology and the theories of Sigmund Freud. <clears throat> the young girl may be the artist's dead sister, in which case an incestuous triangle of father, son, and daughter was implied. Ernest used a technique that he invented called grattage to create the forest. This involved the painted canvas being laid over a rough wooden surface and scraped to produce a rich, grainy texture. The large ring in the background represents the sun. One of the first things that caught my eye about this painting was the gloomy feel that it gives off. We see this darker gray overcast over a forest, and then a woman who is topless, missing a face, and a figure that could be of a man or something similar, uh, all in one painting. It gives almost a sense of confusion, if you will, for those that don't understand where it's coming from. This surrealist movement and this infatuation with Sigmund Freud and dream theory all feeds into the emotion and a little bit of the abstractness that's found in this uh, painting here. And uh, that overall very much caught my eye. So my work is also from 1927. This piece is titled The Black Thunder. It is done by Paul Collin. However, this piece comes from the Art Deco movement rather than the Surrealist movement. Um, Paul Collin was one of France's greatest poster artists of his time. And this piece comes from an actually much larger portfolio entitled Le Tumult Noir, which in English translates to The Black Craze. The whole portfolio, um, and including this picture, features a American-born French singer, dancer, entertainer named Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker was the first black woman to become a world-famous entertainer. She is also known as the Black Pearl or the Bronze Venus. In 1925, Josephine Baker and her band exploded on the Paris scene. A couple years later, her lover and lifelong friend Paul Collin created this portfolio of her to showcase her on Paris's entertainment scene. This painting is actually a lithography, which is the image is originally drawn with oil or fat or wax on a smooth limestone plate. After that, the stone is treated with an acid mixture that etches portions of the stone that were not protected by the, by the oil or the wax, um, anything that's grease-based. When the stone is moistened with water, these etched areas retain the water and the oil-based ink could then be applied and could then be applied and would be repelled by the water, sticking only the original drawing. The ink would finally be transferred to a blank paper sheet producing the printed image. 
Having this work of art be a lithograph was actually ideal because it is a poster art, which means they needed to find a way to make almost a stamp and print it, and that way there could be posters and pictures up all around Paris that are highlighting Julian, Josephine Baker, and her band. The poster, um, as you can see here, was inspired by Josephine's actual stage costume, her famous banana skirt that is missing a top, but it's Paris, it's the 20s, they loved it. What I found striking about this poster art is how Paul Cullen used lines and shadows and those like extra movements and almost like outlining the painting to really show the movement and give the whimsical feel that you got when you were watching Josephine Baker on stage. All right, and that concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening. My name is Isaac. And I'm Kim. And we hope you guys have a great day.